thank you for that word and song that is certain that these are stormy times for many people. But the word of the Lord gives us assurance that we can ride out the storm. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Robert. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. The Lord always amazes me uh, how he can raise up folk, how he can do things. Amen. 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 God bless you. For our scripture reading today is found again in the book of Ruth in the Old Testament, chapter 1. We bring your attention down to verse 19, if you were there. The New King James Translation, page 306 in our two Bibles, if you have not found it yet. Ruth chapter 1, beginning at verse 19, says, Now the two of them went until they came to Bethlehem. And it happened when they had come to Bethlehem that all the city was excited because of them. And the women said, Is this Naomi? But she said to them, Do not call me Naomi. Call me Mara. For the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord has brought me home again empty. Why do you call me Naomi, since the Lord has testified against me, and the Almighty has afflicted me? So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabites, her daughter-in-law with her, who returned from the country of Moab. Now they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of barley harvest. Precious Father, we thank you for this day for another opportunity to share your word. Less of us, more of thee. We pray that you bind in the spirit that would hinder your word from accomplishing what you so desire that it should accomplish. We thank you and we love you and we glory in who you are. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 Second reading of verse 20 says, but she said to them, do not call me Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt bitterly with me. I want to talk for a few moments today from the subject when your normal gets snatched from you. When your normal gets snatched from you. A lady by the name of Lisa Turquist, I believe is the last name, wrote a book some time back. It's one of New York's best sellers. She titled the book Uninvited. And in her book, she talks about rejection, among other things. And she says that as she made up her list about being rejected, that one line seemed to sum up all of the things that she thought about rejection. And that line was that I don't want my normal to be snatched away. Life feels impossibly risky when I'm reminded how unpredictable circumstances can uh, shatter and forever change what I know and love about my life. And in the fallout of life, some pieces never find a way to fall back into place. Are you among those this morning who have had the experience of having your normal snatched away from you. Yeah. Lisa said that she needed a clear picture of normal being snatched away and one day she found herself in a shoe store with her daughter at Christmas time. And as she and her daughter were shopping, a lady screamed and ran out of the shoe store. Her scream had gotten the attention of the merchant there and he ran out behind her because she was wearing the boots that she was trying on. As he ran after her, he discovered that a thief had been watching her as she tried on the boots, and at the right moment, 
when she walked in front of the mirror, the thief snatched her purse and ran out of it. It turned out that she only lost her cell phone that, that was in the midst of the screaming and the running and, and, and the thief tossed her purse aside and took the cell phone. That said, Lisa was a picture where normal got snatched from her. You ever had normal snatched away from you? Your normal way of life, your normal way of doing things, your normal routine as you get up in the morning and uh, as you move through your day. There are normal things for all of us. Normal procedures that we follow sometimes. And, and sometimes the normal gets snatched from us. As we look at the story of Ruth and Naomi, we can see a picture of normal getting snatched from us. They have experienced famine. They've been experienced, as our old people used to say, from hand to mouth. Because there was no bread in the land. They normally been been able to get up and to enjoy the food that was available day by day. But when famine hit, there was a scarcity of food. And so the normal part of life of being able to eat and, 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 and to give yourself nutrients through the food had been snatched away. Then when we look at Naomi, and Naomi has lost her husband. She normally had been being able to have somebody to provide for her, to look after her, to, to, to nurture her, to love her, to help her feel secure as a family person, but then all of a sudden that her husband is snatched away. The next thing is that she has lost both of her sons. She's used to having them around, being able to call on them to come and do whatever mama asked them to do, to, to love them as a mama would love, and, and, and to see them uh, on a daily routine. But all of a sudden, death has snatched that normal part of life from her. The daughter-in-laws in this story have lost their husbands and now Ophrah has gone back to her people in Moab and uh, only Naomi and Ruth are left. Because the normal of life has been snatched from them that Naomi decides that she needs to go back home. She tries to get Ruth to go back to her people as well as Ophrah, but over decides, but Ruth decides that she's going to stay with her wherever she goes and that the God that she worships is going to be her God. The journey back to the land of Judah and, and, and they are examples of people adjusting to what we call today a new normal. New normal is when we realize that life is not going back the way it was before. Naomi, Ophir, and Ruth realized that they had to adjust to life in a different way. I, I thought maybe that it would go back, you know, I could get a little younger, I could feel a little more, a little more spunky, but, but I found out that I, I have to adjust to the new normal of life, that, that there are, are aches and pains, and uh, 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 there are, are some grunts and groans sometimes now when I sit down and when I get up, and, and that's the new normal that I have to adjust to. What used to be a normal way of life when I could jump out of the pack house door. Have to adjust to that now and realize that if I break something, it takes longer to heal back than it used to. What used to be normal is now different. They, they, they couldn't stop the famine and they couldn't bring their loved ones back as they, uh, as they wished that they could. And, and so they had to adjust and they had to keep living. So Ophir returns to her people, but Naomi and Ruth journey to the land of Judah together. They journey as a part of the new norm. Ruth and Naomi needed one another because uh, in the process of adjusting to the new normal, we need somebody else in our lives. We don't need to go the journey alone. We need somebody beside us that will help us and that will encourage us. That's why Jesus gave the encouragement in Matthew 11, 28 and 29 
that he invites us to allow him to share the burden with us, that he tells us to uh, come unto me, all you are who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That he invites us that in the midst of our getting adjusted to the new normal of life, that we allow him to be yoked up with us. That we might be able to find strength. So Ruth and Naomi, they journey together back to uh, Ruth's home, to Naomi's hometown and uh, to Naomi's relatives. I, I, I call it the, the opportunity to be able to go back to the foundation. And, and, and I look at it in the times in which we live, my brothers and sisters, and, and I say to myself that, that I believe that the Lord is calling us back to the foundation, to the real thing, to the things that are important in the times in which we live. All of these other things that we thought were important that we find out that they are of less important in times like these because we have to adjust to the new normal. When we look at their lives, that they set the example for us when we have trials in our life. They set the example for us of how to deal with the new normal of everyday living. Our, our new normal may not be somebody else's new normal because, again, as the lady in the story, her purse had been stolen. That if all of that identity and everything had gone, that would have been her new normal. She would have had to deal with that. Uh, somebody else experiences death. Some have experienced cancer. Some have experienced diabetes and have to adjust your diet, have to adjust your way of living. And that becomes the new normal of life. But Jesus promises to be with us in our adjustment to that new normal of life. Right now. Right. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 9, and as Paul is encouraging the church, and he says, but concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. Jesus said by, to the disciples that by this shall all men know that you are my disciples because of the love that you have one for another. So even in times like this when we have to adjust to the new normal, we still have a responsibility of loving one another, of letting the world know that we love one another so that the world might be drawn in because we love and we care for one another. We must be careful, my brothers and sisters, in our isolation that we don't let the devil destroy our hope. He loves to isolate us, loves to catch us all alone and, and to work his deceptive strategies. Remember that he waited and he watched to catch Eve away from Adam in the garden, that he might tempt her. He waited until Jesus had been in the wilderness for 40 days and was hungry when he tempted him to turn stone into bread. And so in our times of isolation, my brothers and sisters, it, it may get worse. We're praying for the better. But if it gets worse, we must be careful in our isolation that we don't allow the devil to attack our minds to where that we become depressed and we get bent all out of shape and we lose our hope because that's what the devil wants us to do. But be remember, in remembrance that the Lord has promised that he'll be with us always, even until the end of the age. That's why he sent his spirit back. So that his spirit can comfort us when we are adjusting to the new normal. Oh, yeah. Let us use our times of crisis to produce growth rather than dysfunction. And when we look at the life of Ruth and Naomi, that's what they did. That they learned to allow their lives to become more productive. When we look at Naomi, her circumstances didn't collapse because of her uh, inability uh, to cope that, that um, she was able to cope with what was going on. She had somebody else along with her, and, and she had that hope of being able to reach back uh, to, to home and find the, the foundation that she needed to be able to find the help that uh, is needed. And so we, my brothers and sisters, need a network of people around us. That's why it's important in times like this to call one another, to share with one another, to encourage uh, one another. We have to rely on family and we have to rely on friends. And I don't know about uh, those of you uh, here, but I, I remember in my growing up, and most of you probably grew up the same way, and sometimes we stray away from those things. But um, we need to encourage what we used to do around the breakfast table, that, uh, and especially on Sunday morning, that we had devotion and, and, and somebody would say a, a verse. And if you were the youngest in the family like me, somebody might hunt you because you didn't know a verse until you said, Jesus, we 
Amen. Yeah, yeah. All right. And so in times like these, we need that network of family around us, that, that we need that devotional time. And, and, and that was one of the things that I was listening to Dr. Tony Evans this morning, and he was saying about our families, and uh, he had his children up there, and they were talking about their upbringing and how that those things that they experienced then will help them to be able to get through that crisis now. And I want to share with us and encourage us today that, that when the normal is snatched from us and we have to adjust to the new normal, that that the foundations that were instilled in us, that if we'll let those foundations reign, if we'll let those things come back to us, those are the things that will get us through. Those are the things will, that will help us to be able to adjust to a new normal because most of the time when we have tragedies, things don't go back the same. 9-11, we're still not the same. All of the different epidemics that have uh, crossed our paths in recent years. We're still not the same because somewhere we lost somebody. Somewhere somebody was uh, left in a different shape than what they were left in before and they've had to adjust to a new normal. So chances are that things don't go back uh, the way uh, that they used to be. And we read with the little boy that you love, that you think that you love, that, that uh, when he has suddenly walked out and said he found another girlfriend, that, that, that you know, life, chances are life won't go back the same no more because you won't be with that same individual again. And so we have to adjust to the new normal. Sometimes our, our normal can be snatched from us and, 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 and we have to cope with what is going on. Jesus, James lets us know that, that, that in light of our different crises, that, that, that crises produce an opportunity for the growing of our faith. In James 1 and 2, he says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. And so when we look at Naomi and Ruth's normal as it had been snatched away, that they still had faith. They, they still embraced and supported one another. Uh, they had the courage to go back to the foundation, to Naomi's home where she had relatives. And, and the scripture would have us to know that, that she had a relative named Boaz in Bethlehem. But Boaz was not just any relative, but, but chapter 2 says that he was a man of great wealth. And they didn't just uh, land in Bethlehem at any point of time, but it was the beginning of barley harvest. And that meant that, that Ruth could go out and that she could glean grain from the fields and she and Naomi could uh, be able to survive. And so as a part of adjusting to the new normal that, that they have to do some things to fend for themselves and you and I have to do things sometimes in the adjustment of the new normal to be able to take care of ourselves, to take care of our household, to take care of our families. A few weeks back, we didn't worry about sanitizing when we come into church. We didn't worry about shaking hands, hugging people, talking to people. But because of the adjustment to the new normal that, you know, we, we have to shake from a distance. We have to hug from a distance that we might do our part in not spreading uh, that which is prevalent upon us. And so as we look at uh, as Naomi and Ruth and um, how that they were able to survive because of their getting back to the foundation, we look at God, how he can take our life and let it move from bitterness to grace. And uh, Naomi and Ruth find grace in the sight of Boaz. Uh, this lesson is good for our anxiousness, our, our uh, anxiety, when we uh, wonder about what in the world are we going to do in our situations. Uh, we got up a few days ago and a, a, a few folks had uh, COVID-19 uh, overseas and then it moved to our waters uh, on our cruise ships. It moved on our um, Shores and it, it moved into our airlines and our airplanes and it moved into America and now it's spreading throughout our nation. Uh, a few days ago, uh, the stock market shot up, but now it's dropped. People are worried and people are anxious, but God reminds us in 2 Samuel that if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will heal the land. 
The word here is humble. Somebody said that humble opens the door for grace. So my brothers and sisters, let us be humble that we might find grace in the sight of the Lord. Let us not uh, be so high-minded that we're not able to bow in the presence of the Lord. Let us not be so uplifted in our own selves, my brothers and sisters, that we are not able to allow the Lord to uh, convene in our lives that we might be able to find grace in his sight. The last thing that I want to share with us as I go to my seat is that we need to persevere under our circumstances. And again, Ruth and Naomi share with us that lesson of perseverance in hard times. We are in times of new normal. We're trying, as Ruth and Naomi did, to adjust to the circumstances of the day. The circumstances that they nor we have had to adjust to before. Adjustment is a process. The letter to the Hebrews reminds us in chapter 10 that we have need of endurance. Paul says, for you have need of endurance so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. It tells us why we need endurance for, he says, for yet a little while and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. In Ruth and Naomi's time of crisis, God was working to conform them to his will so that Jesus our Savior could be born through the lineage of David. And he's still working through our situations, our crises of life to conform us to his will. So let us hold fast to the God of promise who delivered the Israelites in their enslavement. He delivered Daniel in the lion's den and he delivered the Hebrew boys from the fiery furnace. He delivered Paul and Silas when they were locked up in jail in their times of crisis. Because he's a God of deliverance and he can deliver us. Let us then uh, let him transform us to his image, to his will, through whatever situations that we are going through. Let us let him help us. Let him help us to be able to adjust to the new normal of life. If we need to stay in, that we can adjust to it. If we need to go out, that we can adjust to it. If we need to assemble in smaller numbers, we can adjust to it. If we need to assemble in larger numbers, that we can adjust to it. If we need to talk on the telephone and communicate to others, we can do that. If we need to text or we need to email, that we can adjust to the situation because the God that we serve is a God of promise. He's a God who's there with us that when our normal gets snatched away, that he's there to see us through it. As we go through this pandemic, let us go, uh, not go stare crazy and, 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 and um, be uh, bad off in our time of confinement, but let us not lose hope in our new normal, our, our new adjustment, but let us hold fast to the Christ, to him who is the author and finisher of our faith. <clears throat> if we remember that as we move toward the Easter story, as we move toward Calvary, we remember that those early disciples that after Jesus had been uh, crucified and had been buried, that they had to adjust to a new normal. They had to adjust to a Jesus that they had been used to having with them for some three years, that they had to adjust to not having him around anymore. But the good news is that before he left them, he told them that he would send them a comforter. And he said that the comforter will be with you always, even until the end of the age, uh, the end of the world. And we have that same spirit with us today, my brothers and sisters, that helps us to adjust through our new normal. That whatever life is throwing at us, that his spirit is there, his presence is there with us to be able to help us to cope, to be able to help us to adjust. And if so, it be that this earthly life takes us out. Then he says that we have another building. A house not made with hands eternal in the heaven. He's prepared a place for us that as we receive him as Lord and Savior of our lives, that, that, that we can go and be with him. For every day is Sunday. 
Sabbath has no end. Where there are no more crises in life. Where, where there is no more sickness. Where there are no more viruses to plague us. Uh, there, there are no more bills and no more heartaches and no more headaches. But we have to receive him as Lord and Savior. So that when this earthly life is over. That he can call us up and welcome us home. And he can say well done to us. You ever had your normal snatched from you? Naomi, Ruth, and Ophrah give us examples of how to get on with life, how to face the new normal so that we can still be victorious. As we stand together, the door of the church is open, the invitation to the Christian discipleship is extended.